talking helps. One must share one's feeling. So does talking and sharing really helps? Or are there are other techniques that you use for the treatment? In terms of treatment, it's a, it's a fairly vast topic and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try to you know, summarize it systematically. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, if you have what we call uh, clinical depression, uh, where you are showing all these signs which I just mentioned earlier. So in that case, if you are into what we call a severe category of depression, we would want to start you on certain uh, medications. Uh, these medications actually change some of the receptors, some of the neurotransmitters in your brain and bring about changes uh, which, which are caused by, uh, sort of which revert the changes of depression. So treatment with medication sometimes becomes very important for people, especially for people who are very genetically predisposed because uh, in that case talking therapy is not the best form of treatment. There is no evidence for it. So if you are suffering from severe depression, we would probably want to start you on medications. Uh, even for you know some moderate types of depression, we would if, if a person wants, then we can put him on medications which definitely help. Uh, so it affects uh, the, the, the success rate of these medications is quite high. So and there is evidence of their, uh, of their effectiveness um, and the side effect profile is also not, uh, also warrants us to use these medications. Uh, so coming back to your question, then once a person has started recovering from uh, the, the, the very severe symptoms when they are on their path to recovery, then we move on to uh, side by side we start what we know as talking therapies. Now talking therapies uh, can be focused on what sort of problems we want to focus on. Uh, for some people, uh, for the most effective form of therapy is what we call as cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay. Um, and what's that? Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy is a form of talking therapy where we actually, you know, try to target a patient's thoughts and feelings. Okay. So, uh, to give you an example, uh, when a person has uh, depression, uh, depression can lead to, you know, thoughts of, you know, low self-confidence, decreased self-esteem, and based on the patient's previous life, he might have certain, you know, wrongful assumptions about himself. For example, he might think that he's, uh, he has failed an exam, so he's, he's not meant to study, he's, he's, he's somehow inferior to his colleagues. So now that thought, because of the mood that he's in, because of depression, just keeps building up. So uh, in a, on, a, on a regular day-to-day -day basis, we always doubt ourselves whether we are good enough, right? But when a person has depression, that thought just amplifies. So, and that amplification of that then further worsens your mood even further, right? Because if you keep thinking these thoughts, then your mood further worsens. You're not going to venture out because you always feel that you're, you're, you're no good, you know, uh, people don't like you. Self-doubt. Yeah, so that increases. So we need to break that cycle because it's a vicious cycle of bad thoughts leading to bad mood and bad mood leading to symptoms of depression. Depression then first, further worsening these thoughts. So it becomes a vicious cycle. So we need to break this cycle at the thought level, you know. And how we do it is what we know as cognitive behavioral therapy. We try to identify these wrongful assumptions and thoughts, right? So we try to challenge uh, the patient. Why do you think that it is uh, so? Why do you think that you're, uh, you know, somehow inferior? So and these thoughts usually we have seen are are, are wrong. In fact, you know, they they have no basis. They have no evidence for it. It's just something that started and just stuck with them. So if we challenge these thoughts. Whenever, for example, we teach patients, we make them practice thoughts uh, of challenging, th uh, challenging these thoughts. For whenever a thought like a negative thought enters the mind, they have to challenge it. Why am I thinking so? Is it really? Is it really so? Is it just an imagination? Is it just a symptom of my depression? And uh, with continued therapy, and this takes time. Uh, that cognitive behavioral therapy is something which is uh, done on a long-term basis. It takes about 14, 16 sessions. Might take about three or six months, but. It works, yeah, but it works on the core symptoms. It, it works, it goes a long way in, in maintaining remission, that is, in keeping depression away. So it has not only just, uh, you know, treatment value, but it also helps further in, in your life that, you know, you can identify your symptoms of depression, change your way your thoughts are. So apart from CBT, there are other forms of therapies as well, which, are, which we tailor based on the patient's needs. Um, but yeah, talking therapy is definitely one of the most important parts of uh, treatment of depression.